When bold knights lanced and unicorns pranced, King Arthur's court held sway, and the sheriff moaned as Robin Hood roamed through the woods of yesterday. But wizards and knights, outlaws and kings, of that time so far away, are in New York now, once a year, at the cloisters on festival day. And we were there. trained when it's very young. That's an espalier tree, Warren. Before I came down to New York, I didn't know much about medieval art. But Kristen and I were going to spend a week at the Cloisters. That's a medieval art museum. My name's Warren, and I live in New Hampshire. There are two other kids we were going to spend a lot of time with, Pedro and Maggie. They live in New York, and they had already spent some time at a workshop the Cloisters run. Who knows what's going to happen next Saturday? Oh, the festival. A festival, oh, yes. We've only got one week to get ready for that festival now. We can how shall we, dogs, how shall we decorate? We can put like, flowers and um, banners. Stuffed animal. That looks like a jouster. Well, maybe it is. There's a horse, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. it is. But you know, this came from a monastery, and he I has think... He like a sword in his hand. Yeah. Spear. And I think it might be St. Martin dividing up his cloak because he found a beggar who was needing some clothes. Look, there's um, some kind of dragon fin or something. Maybe it's St. George killing a dragon. It seems there's a curly tail behind the horse. Yeah, then maybe yeah. it's St. George. You're really looking now, aren't you? I like the cloisters because um, Mrs. Kiefner would tell us the stories on um, all the columns. There were all the different pictures. If I had come off the street and looked at it, I don't know. If I had looked at the cloister, I don't think I'd know what it was at all. And you can look at these things forever. What kind of a fellow do you think this is? A knight. How can you tell? Sword and shield. Uh -huh. and For our festival, we have to make costumes and a big banner. And so she, Mrs. Kiefner wanted us to see all the rooms in the museum to understand what to do on our costumes. And it could be used later in, in just knowledge. What kind of an animal shall we go hunt for? Um, a Capricorn. Like Unicorn. Unicorn? I like the unicorn. It's something to kind of think of as something that's not true, but just uh, you can think about whenever you think of goodness or pureness or something kind, you can think about the unicorn. You have journeymen to help you. Each year, the Cloisters runs a workshop for the kids to make their costumes and decorations for the festival day. It's set up like a medieval guild. We were apprentices, and we were each assigned to a journeyman. Maggie and Pedro worked with Charlie, and Warren worked with Susan, and I worked with Anne. My first project was a processional figure. It has to be about a little bigger than your head. Uh, a little more. That's good. All right, now we're going to cover it with this. This is what they make casts out of. You know, we're going to put features on after we make the first shape. Mm -hmm. My processional figure is going to be a court jester with big cheeks and a big chin, giant ears, big popping eyes. And when this hardens, we're going to pop the balloon and pull it out. It's just to keep the form of the head. And I'm starting to make a breastplate. I thought it was kind of a neat idea to make a breastplate out of chicken wire with paper mache over it. How do I make these so hard? 
When we went down to the workshop, yeah, I decided to make a five-headed monster. You also got to make it round, too, because it's a three-dimensional project. So you cut the corners like that, and you make it round. That right. Now you try it. Okay? Watch your fingers. How? Oh, I know what you mean. Right. Just like that. I saw this figure in a, mu in a museum. It was a small statue. And then it had five hands, the neck and the face of a dinosaur, and then the body was just plain body, bird body. And then you do the four separate necks, or the five. You got five necks with a head. And then you just glue the feathers on. Cover the newspaper up all the way. Okay, now that you've got the rough shape... Bruce is a master craftsman. An apprentice is the student, and... A journeyman is the one, is a person who is sort of journeying to be a professional or teacher. Well, it's round, but I like the... Looks kind of cute on him. Yeah, but I like the long one. You want a long pointy nose? Yeah. So we're going to have to make a new one. We're going to make a banner. A lot of times banners are used for identification and symbolism, and they symbolize, you know... I like the idea of uh, okay, how we work on our banner together. It's a group project. As we're doing this, we really have to think of a theme or a motif from the Middle Ages. Does anyone have any idea what they'd like oh, to... Oh, I got an idea. It's like a half-man, half-heart. Oh, the center? I got an idea. Yeah, you can center. have unicorn fighting with the half-man and half-horse. That sound good to everyone to do beads from the Middle Ages? Yeah, yeah. that'd be a good idea. I think it's good. Yeah. Oh, would you like to do a cut of You can do that, too. Yeah. Can yeah. we make up our own, for our own family? Oh, sure. Yeah. I haven't really thought of all the different meanings for all the symbols that you could have on a family crest. Here was the first time I had really sat down and thought about it and really worked on it. Something like that. And it really could tell a story about all your relatives. Do you know what you're going to do? I might do a coat of arms. Do you know what kind of coat of arms? Maybe, like, symbols for the family name. Okay. Could you could use the, your father's profession, maybe? Or, um, what does your father do? He's a photographer. A photographer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> here, I'm going to put, uh, because my father is a lawyer, the scales are for... And is your mother going to be on your crest? Yeah. Where is she going to be? Well, this is going to be a book, because she studies. Uh-huh. What does she do? Well, she's studying anthropology. Oh, so this will be symbol symbolic of your mother. Did you finish your drawing yet? Yes. Oh, I really like that. Thanks. What do you think of this size piece? For the monster? For the monster. Yeah, I think it would be good. And colorful. How about I put this on? Put it under. Under the Oh, house. I really like the workshop. And the, the people who are there are really nice, and they help you a lot. And when I first came to New York, and it was our first day, I didn't think it would be anything like it really was. And I kept on thinking to myself, Wow, <laughs> so much is going on. And I'm just getting over getting used to it. I like the projects that are going on because they're really interesting. And one is Charlie has made a unicorn that's out of foam rubber, and it's a puppet. They're just completing right now a maiden out of foam rubber to sit on top of the unicorn. And uh, when someone goes in the unicorn, and when two people are or taking it around, it, it moves and it, it um, pets you with its horn and it, it sort of uh, walks down. around and, and when the people get out of it, it goes to bed. Can I drive to make my feathers blue? Yeah, any color. It's up to you. It's your project. What are you going to be on festival day, Pedro? A king. Are you going to be a peace-loving king or a ruthless ruler? I'm going to be a peace-loving king. Good, but you already have blood on your sword. That's because I needed it once. Just yeah. once. That's a good policy. Have you thought about what you're going to put in the middle of your shield? Oh, have you any idea what I can put on yeah. it? Yes. Maybe we can ask Bruce for some suggestions. All right. Okay. Bruce? Yeah. Can you come here a minute? Bruce? Yeah. Can I have um, some ideas of peace signs for my shield? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got, in fact, with me, I've got a book that's called Beasts in the Heraldry. Maybe we can use some animals on the shield. Okay. All right. We've got a stag here. See that the way they put it on the shield? Okay. 
and we've got a dolphin. Dolphin's really nice. You can make the background kind of wavy for water, too. Well, well let's take a, a pencil and I'll draw it and then we'll paint it. Could you hand me the head so we can stick it on? I'm not sure what the festival's going to look like afterwards, but uh, in the morning of this day, I was very scared that nothing would be completed, and I felt kind of good that but finally we had finished this, <laughs> and so I was, I was very happy about that. One of the projects I have is my costume. I painted a sword and made one. I paint my chest protector. They sort of remind me of King Arthur, King Richard, all those other people. One thing we did when we were down in New York was go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and visit Dr. Nichols. He was in charge of arms and armor for the Metropolitan. This armor is tournament armor. It is about 500 years old. It was made shortly before 1500, right about the uh, period of the discovery of America. The armor itself is very thick and very heavy because it was made for safety's sake. You would not want it to get hurt. And the man is strapped into the armor, firmly like in, uh, in a brace, that he would not get whiplash when he was being hit by the um, spear of the opponent. The helmet is screwed to the breastplate and to the backplate. He had to really be screwed in. And uh, he has a little shield in front of his breast that is called the target. That is an Italian word for little shield. And if the other one hit him right on target, that was the best way to hit him. This way uh, he could not be um, hurt, but he, he would uh, get maximum impact uh, to be pushed off his horse, hopefully. The lance itself that they used um, had a so-called so coronel. That was a lance head that had three prongs. It would not penetrate, but it would give him a good gra grip and a good push. The horse itself was blindfolded, as you see, and it had bells right behind his ears on this color. This way it, it would not see the uh, oncoming, unrushing horse of the opponent, and it would not hear the cheering of the crowd and the trampling of the other horse, and it would only do whatever it um, was told by his master's reins and by his knees. Right? It must have been very hard and sweaty and all that armor. Plus, you'd have to wear padding below it and everything. It probably looks better than it really felt. There was probably one advantage to being a kid because you didn't have to wear all that armor and stuff. The horns he has on his helmet, these were for, um, because you could not see his face, that you knew who was who. They put some sort of symbol, horns or feathers or wings or something, that you could see at a glance who was coming at you. In the old days, everything was made by hand. There were no machines. What would you call what you do, what you're doing there? That's riveting. And that's how the helmet kept together, by soft rivets. Are there many uh, riveters left? <laughs> riveters, yes, but armors. There are very few left in the, in the, in the uh, Western Hemisphere. He is the only one. Did the women ever wear these um, armor? Normally or? not. Uh, a few of them did, such as Joan of Arc, but they were exceptions. And the helmet was put on like this. Come on, Warren. Uh, how does it feel? Heavy. <laughs> I really felt excited before I got to the festival. Well, I was thinking about, like, um, how do people think my costume looks? I decided to be a peasant. I don't know why, but I just wanted to. Like, somebody asks you, what are you? And then you say, a queen, and they go, oh, a queen. A queen is too common. Like, everybody's, like, you tell them, oh, a queen, oh. But if you say a peasant, like, and they start telling, asking you, what's a peasant, and what do you look like, and everything, it's really interesting. So, I felt like it was different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
I felt really good because I helped put some work into it. I felt proud of myself. Really good. You did a heck of a job. Yeah. There we go. What a week. Yeah. Came out wonderful. Yeah. I was really happy with the banner and, and I liked I liked to look at it and I was I felt sort of good, especially when they put my processional figure on top of it. It's kind of special because the banner was special. Can you adjust the arms a little bit? Okay. Great. Looks nice. You just pull over his hair a little. Yeah, just. Yeah. And there it is. Hi. Yay. Yay. That was good. Once I nail it on. The procession will start in about. 25 seconds! <laughs> I felt sort of like a person back then in a, in a costume with a, a hat that would go over your head and leading a unicorn in a procession. I was watching in front of the castle. Felt like a real king because the castle was right behind me, like if it was following me everywhere I went. So proud. I'd never really seen a parade like that before. This one had a lot of kids in it wearing their costumes. And plus, they had all the journeymen and the master craftsmen. When I was in front of the procession, I don't know, but I felt special, like, I didn't feel shy or anything, but, like, I didn't weigh that much. I just said hello and things like that. The Red Knight Charles is the Black Knight. <laughs> I thought it was really funny because all the time they're cardboard jousting sticks kept getting bent and broken. It must have been a lot more adventurous to live back then because all the things happening, all the big rich people like dukes and kings and all that, to watch them go by, see all the jousting matches, it's been fun. These horses were different from what we saw in the museum because the ones in the museum had their eyes covered and bells around their head. And these, this one, the uh, horses could see. And if someone was coming at another person, the horses sometimes sort of backed away a little bit. <laughs>
I really could think of how it would be like if there was a festival way back in the Middle Ages. Just wonder what the kids did back then. It was probably really nice for the kids to have a festival, the not-so-rich ones, because they had to work all the time. It's a change. They got a chance to play games and do things they don't usually do, too. Sorry, the festival was only day, one day. I liked the whole idea. I liked the whole thing. The thing I remember the most is people. What made it really nice was that the people that were there, they really didn't know you like they could see you for the first time and they'll still be nice. I'm going to remember this for a long time, especially the unicorn. On the street, down the river, we will meet America. America. Hear our voices of surprise, share adventure through our eyes. America. America. Time to discover anything is possible and dreams to uncover. If you come with us, we are the future. Everything is possible and dreams. Can nurture.